Todd, you were mentioning know what you own. You, you're on that theme all of the time. I just want to highlight what happened to the low volatility ETF. You know, these 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 ETFs, they rebalance uh, regularly, many of them quarterly. Low volatility was very popular in the last year and a half. It rebalanced just recently. Now, you think low volatility, you think like, oh, that's got to be utilities, right? Or REITs or something like that, or Procter & Gamble or consumer staples. And Well, it was. It turns out they rebalanced and they got rid of most of the utilities. Um, and th now they own Amazon <laughs> and they own eBay. <laughs> and it sold the utility, the Con Ed. It sold Con Ed. And, and McDonald's used to be low volatility. Apparently, it's not anymore. And Todd, uh, th this, I found this very amusing because this is, uh, illustrates your point here. So REITs and utilities, it turns out, they weren't so low volatility back in March and April. When the rebalancing came in, they, they threw out a bunch of them. Uh, and, and low volatility is now more associated with, with health care, essentially, and some of the consumer staples names. Um, Todd, I guess this makes sense. Um, I don't know well, why we think if Amazon is low volatility now. but Well, Amazon held up better than the broader market, I guess, is, is the takeaway. And for the fact that people are using it more than they ever did beforehand, uh, given that we're staying at home. But you're right. So we, we this used to be SPLV used to be considered a real estate and a utility heavily weighted product. And it rotated away from those. Those stocks did not hold up during the most recent quarter as part of the rebalance. And the stocks that held up much better were primarily in consumer staples and healthcare. So still defensive sectors. We've just seen a rotation from two defensive sectors to another two defensive sectors. What also caught my eye is that this ETF now actually has more exposure to technology stock. It's now 9% of the ETF than real estate and utilities combined. Uh, SPLV has always been underweighted towards the growth of your sectors like technology. Unlike USMV, which is iShares minimum volatility ETF, iShares uses more of a sector constraint approach. So 20% is normal to find within USMV to the technology sector and under 10% is common to find within those defensive sectors. So. These ETFs rebalance. It's important if you own them to make sure you look inside and use third-party research to be yeah. able to help you validate that. Yeah, I guess what I mean, Todd. What's the conclusion here? Does in a high volatility environment, does low volatility doesn't necessarily outperform? I mean, what is the conclusion we could have here? It's presumably, people own low volatility because they make an association. If the market gets crazy, these stocks will move less, and it turns out this assumption is wrong. What's, I'm trying to figure out what's the teaching lesson here from this. Well, I think, the, I think the teaching lesson is that if you're buying a smart beta ETF, don't just buy it and hold it and forget about it, but make sure you understand. So it's now it's owning what are the most recently low volatility stocks. So it's actually doing what you'd want it to do. It's rotating away from what had been previously low vol, but then spiked yeah. a bit. There's right. no static. But after volatility. the fact... But after the fact, yes. it's doing it. You almost want actively manage low volatility on a daily basis to figure this out. I mean, the, my point is people bought this thing or used to buy it because they didn't they thought low volatility would 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 outperform in a high volatility environment. And that that's just that did not happen here. OK, so I have a, it, it sort of makes you challenge your assumptions about what you own some of these things for. They don't work the way you actually think they may necessarily work, maybe because the assumptions were wrong. Like the idea that utilities would always be low volatility turns out not to be true. You see? So well, Bob, I, think I don't know. I, I, the I, the go ahead, Sal. Because we're looking at it through the prism of the equity markets and the way that a lot of these uh, low vol in the equity markets are looking at historical volatility. And you're right, they're not necessarily predictive of future mm. volatility. You know, we, we've worked with S&P uh, to create an index and an ETF that actually applies a similar concept to the high-yield corporate bond market, which in some ways has parallels to the uh, equity market, but it actually uses forward-looking information like like credit, um, like uh, option-adjusted spreads and duration. And what we find there is it actually does really well during periods of volatility, heightened volatility. Some of it is from security yeah. selection, but a big piece of it is actually coming from the sector selection. And we've done research looking back, you know, over 20 years. And we found that it's a consistent theme. So going back to the early 2000s, media and telecom companies were actually yeah. underweight as we had the TMT crisis. Yeah. Autos and financials, yeah. the great financial crisis. More recently, it's been underweight things like energy and financials and overweight health care um, and consumer staples and communication services. So it is a little bit more forward-looking. And maybe there are clues that you could take out of the high-yield corporate bond market that maybe you could actually apply to equity. You can invest directly in the high-yield corporate bonds as a yeah. way to potentially dampen the volatility.